Have you ever wanted to know just some basic shading techniques? Just a few, just to get you going. Hey Pyro, for the Crate Club this month, we are doing a sunflower project, which is fantastic for learning how to do shading. Now, if you are part of the Crate Club, you already have the materials that you need to make this masterpiece. And if you are not part of the Crate Club, then you either have to go out and get it yourself or you need to join us. <laughs> That's over at crateclub.burnsavvy.com if you wanna check that out. Now, let me just speak to beginners here for just a moment. If you are looking to do shading and you are just starting out, I just want you to know this is one of the hardest practices in wood burning. The easiest thing to do is line art, but not just any line art, it needs to be natural line art, okay? It needs to be something like branches, leaves, uh, flowers, that kind of a thing. Really simple, but not shading. Just learning how to do a line and make it clean and not make it blobby, right? The second hardest thing is to do line art that is more like geometric shapes or architecture or lettering. That is the second level because you have to make that line super clean. If you have a bump on a branch, nobody notices. But if you have a bump on your letter A, everyone notices. So you just want to make sure that you're not setting yourself up for failure. The third hardest level of pyrography is shading. And that is what we are covering today. So if you have done some of those other levels and you feel confident, or you just want to give it a shot, come on in, we're going to have a good time. Now, even within shading, you still want to start at the easiest level. You do not want to start with a portrait. Portraits are one of the hardest levels, okay? You want to start with something that's easier. It has those natural lines like a sunflower. So that's what we're going to do. It is sunflower season here in the Arizona mountains and sunflowers are starting to pop up and brighten up the landscape, lighten up all the roadsides and in my garden around my house, it makes me so happy. So I am super excited to get into this happy little sunflower today. I'm Jenny Lizenby, your pyro professor. Let's burn. Of course, you will need your basswood round. This one is actually not basswood. I'm going to be demonstrating on this piece of wood that I have, but those of you in the Crate Club, you will be getting an artist grade basswood round. You will need some tape and scissors and carbon paper, as well as a tracing tool or pencil or pen, and of course your pattern. You are going to need a hammer and a sawtooth hanger. This one is self-tapping, it's amazing. You will need some sealant, this is polycrylic, and you will need a brush. I also highly recommend a practice wood piece. If you have the crate, you've got one of these in your box. And as far as burners go, I highly recommend that you get a shading tool and a round ball point or something similar. So these ones, these nibs are great tools for shading if you have a solid point burner. And for the ballpoint replacement, I would recommend a flow point, a mini flow, or one of these, which is very similar to the flow points. The first step is to cut out the pattern. And I like to leave enough space to tape this down across the top. That way I can lift the pattern up and check the progress when I am transferring. And once it is taped down, you take your carbon paper, shiny side down, place it between the wood and the pattern, and then trace it using a pencil or this tracing tool. This tracing tool is in the wood burning toolkit and accessories kit, so if you have that, it's a fantastic way to keep this clean and then you can keep reusing your pattern if you want to. Trace lightly, by the way. Eventually you'll be tracing over it with um, a wood burning tool, but you don't want hard lines necessarily. Now at this point, it's a really good idea to check and see if there's anything that you need to erase, any place where you maybe double traced or something. Uh, you don't have to worry too much in the middle, this will be covered, but if you have something down here that needs erased, then consider using a sand eraser. Okay, sand erasers are the best at erasing unwanted marks on the wood. We're going to start with the shading nib and this one is a large round flat shader 
or if you have a solid point, you can use one of these nibs. These are great for shading. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is outline the sunflower petals, but we're not gonna outline it with lines that are harsh. We're going to outline it with an edge. And what I mean by that is you put the sharp part of the edge of the nib on the outside and the soft edge of the nib on the inside. What this does is give the outside kind of a crisper edge and the inside has a softer look to it and it kind of fades in as it goes towards the inside of the sunflower. And we're going to do this around the entire sunflower, all the petals. And the biggest thing is to cover all the carbon lines and make sure that it actually is dark enough to cover those carbon lines. But then it fades lightly as it goes towards the inside of the petal. Remember, it is perfectly okay to turn the wood instead of having to turn the wrist, okay? Sometimes fighting those cords and things can be a little bit tricky. So it's better if you just turn the wood and then you don't have to fight this cord turning and twisting and wearing out your wrist. Okay, now I'm going to take and sweep in these edges here. And if you don't know what I mean when I say sweep in, then you need to go watch my techniques video and I'll put a link to that right up here for you. Once you have the inside done, we're gonna go around and do these outside petals the same way. And the most important idea is that the closer the petal is to the petal in front of it, the darker the petal should be. I'm going to pull in the leaf and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the petals and kind of outline the outside of the leaf and then trace these lines coming out. Final step is to add. Then you want to come back in from the opposite direction, but you want to keep going in the same direction that you did originally. So follow that curve and pull in the edges. Now to fill this in, you want the spaces that are closest to the petals to be dark because that gives it a little more shadow. So we are going in and very gently touching and sweeping this stem here and giving that petal a little bit of contrast against the stem. And then we just pull. If you're enjoying this video so far, it would be amazing if you hit that little like button for me and let me know in the comments what it is that's been most helpful in this video. I love to hear from my fellow pyros. Now for the center, I'm going to make a little bit of a swirly look to it. I'm gonna switch from the shading point to the ball point. And if you are using a solid point burner, you will want to use a nib more like these, like the mini flow, the flow, or like this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to make circles.
Now for the rest of the center, we are going to do stippling, which is basically just dots. It's pointillism. And we're going to go around these edges and add dots. Then you can just go back in and add any little finishing touches that you want to add. You'll notice that when you seal over some of these textured portions, like the sunflower here, sometimes you will get bubbles in there. If you would like the full tutorial on this sunflower, you need to join me in the channel membership here on Burn Savvy. In the white hot level, we focus on shading and that's where this tutorial is going to live. It has lots of extra little tips and techniques, extra little things that teach shading, things that I've taught in my courses. So these are things that you're definitely not gonna wanna miss. So you come join me in the white hot level. And if shading is a little bit higher than where you're ready for, go check out this video to see what level suits you best. Now at this point, I turn it over and I'm gonna add the hanging hardware down, maybe about an inch to an inch and a half. It depends on how much you wanna put it down. So I'm gonna leave mine right about there and hammer that in. The final step is to add a sealant and we are adding a polycrylic. Remember not to make it too thick. You want to add thin layers now, when you are sealing the bark, remember to tap in the edges so that it actually covers all the parts of the bark and so that you can pop the little bubbles that show up in the pieces of bark <laughs> as you are sealing it. Sometimes you will get bubbles in some of these textured portions. I simply take a toothpick and scrape out some of those bubbles. After you've let it dry for two hours, then give it a quick sanding, wipe it off, and add a second coat. Once that's done, you let it dry for 24 hours and it's ready to hang. If you'd like to watch more wood burning projects, you definitely wanna check out this beautiful video right over here. And if you like wood burning tutorials, consider subscribing because we have a bunch more that are gonna be coming up. I'm Jamie Lizenby, your pyro professor, and I'll see you on the next video. Later, pyro.